Happy New Year to everyone and welcome to another program of uh, the copy work uh, by Dr. Dharmasena. Today we are going to discuss about a series of lectures and the first lecture about Parkinsonism, its etiology and uh, explanation of the disease condition. I hope to do this program in three lectures and this is the first lecture. In our previous lecture, we discussed about dementia. Dementia is the most common neurodegenerative condition in the aging population. And today we are going to discuss about Parkinsonism. And Parkinsonism is the second most common neurodegenerative condition in the aging population. The prevalence is 150 cases per 100,000 and there is a male predominance than females, 1.5 to 1. Mostly the symptoms of Parkinsonism is initiated with motor symptoms and we can explain the major symptoms with the synonym of trap, tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia or akinesia and postural instability. Before we discuss about the disease condition, let's analyze about the history of this condition. There are evidence to say that people knew about Parkinsonism even 3000 years before Christ. In Ayurvedic uh, documentations and uh, in the old papyrus of the clay documentations, there were explanations about Parkinsonism-like conditions. But a proper explanation about this condition was done by an old apothecary physician and a surgeon who was in London in 1817 at uh, number one Hoxton Street. His name was James Parkinson. So James Parkinson's father was also an apothecary, a physician, a surgeon who conducted the practice at this place and he inherited the practice after his father's demise and he himself explained the condition of Parkinsonism in an essay written as the shaking palsy. The shaking palsy essay contained of six cases of this shaking palsy and he explained this condition as uh, the current uh, Parkinsonism and uh, but one thing that he mentioned was there were no cognitive impairment which is wrong and later on one physician called uh, uh, Charcot coined the name Parkinsonism and explained the condition in more details, uh, putting the name as Parkinsonism. This is James Parkinson who wrote the book Shaking Palsy. This is Jean Martin Charcot who coined the Shaking Palsy condition as Parkinsonism. Let's discuss about the etiology of Parkinsonism. Actually, uh, this is still not very well known and most of uh, the etiological path is idiopathic but there are conditions uh, there are contributing factors like environmental factors and genetic factors uh, when we think of the environmental factors the toxins like insecticides and weedicides and uh, recurrent head injuries and the artificial opioid toxins MPTP are regarded as contributory factors. Uh, and when we think of the genetic factors, LKKR gene and PARC2 gene and DJ1 gene, PINK1 gene are considered as uh, risk factors. But most of the things are not well explained and well understood and remains idiopathic. Recurrent head injuries also can cause 
parking sanism uh, and it is well known and you all know one famous boxer Muhammad Ali uh, who had Parkinsonism in his early stage due to his head injuries uh, in the boxing game and there are uh, cases of Parkinsonism uh, which happened due to uh, vascular reasons and we call that vascular Parkinsonism. The Parkinsonic features as I told you the uh, tremor, bradykinesia, uh, rigidity and postural instability. These things as an entity can cause uh, due to lot of uh, categorization of causes. Especially we can divide it into these uh, categories. Parkinsonism can be a result of drugs, drug induced Parkinsonism. When we think of the antipsychotic medications and some other medications, there are uh, common uh, presentation of their side effects as Parkinsonism. And uh, the larger group of Parkinsonism is idiopathic Parkinsonism and which we are going to discuss in details in this lecture and uh, there are atypical Parkinsonism or Parkinson plus uh, syndrome. In this category there are uh, four major uh, conditions progressive supranuclear palsy we are going to discuss in a, a separate lecture about this atypical Parkinsonism and uh, multi-system atrophy, cortico-basal syndrome and dementia of Levy body uh, condition. Uh, we discussed in our dementia lecture about the dementia of Levy bodies uh, in details but I am going to uh, explain it again in my atypical Parkinsonism uh, lecture and vascular Parkinsonism I have put in a separate category but some people categorize it as atypical Parkinsonism uh, category as well. So these are the major uh, presentation and deviation of this condition uh, in its symptoms. So we are going to discuss about idiopathic Parkinsonism in details today. What happens in Parkinsonism actually? The pathophysiology of Parkinsonism is well to be understood, but in the early 19th century, a scientist uh, found a uh, in occlusion body in the cells, new uh, nerve cells called Levy bodies. The protein which is involved in this condition is alpha synuclein. What happens is in our substantia nigra, there are cells which are producing dopamine. And uh, the protein alpha synuclein, which is produced as a result of uh, uh, degradation of cells, accumulates in the nerve cells of the substantia nigra and produce Levy bodies. And these Levy bodies cause destruction of the cells of the substantia nigra in our. Uh, basal nuclei and as a result of that the dopamine concentration in the nerve system goes down. At the same time the acetylcholine concentration goes up and as a result of these two uh, chemical uh, reactions and uh, the imbalance of this acetylcholine and dopamine, low dopamine and proportionally high acetylcholine causes the symptoms of Parkinsonism. This reaction starts low well before the age of uh, 
40 50 years but the symptoms present mostly at the age of 60 60 years initially the parkinsonism features do not uh, show clinical signs the earliest signs happens in the body is loss of smell constipation and sleep disturbances before you identify the motor symptoms of parkinsonism well beforehand these symptoms start it is as a result of levy body deposition in the nerves uh, levy body deposition in the nerve system and also in the gut that contributes to constipation you can see the dark pigmentation of the substantia nigra in the middle brain but in parkinsonism these pigmentations are diminished and the substantia nigra is destroyed you can't see this clear pigmentation in parkinsonism as the age progresses these levy bodies are deposited in normal population as well in the brain but it is about only 10 percent but in the case of this parkinsonism patients their substantia nigra is destroyed due to uh, a result of this levy body deposition the motor symptoms of the parkinsonism mostly manifest uh, at the age of 60s average and uh, there are cases where you get the motor symptoms little earlier and uh, there are uh, specific cases but usually the mean diagnosis of these motor symptoms are uh, 60. This condition is mostly uh, progressing with the age and the progression of the disease condition once it is started we can't stop it but only thing that we can do is to control the symptoms. So what are the motor symptoms of uh, Parkinsonism? As I mentioned earlier tremor what kind of tremors are they? They are mostly asymmetrical tremors, asymmetrical tremors and mostly like pin rolling movements and their uh, uh, amp amplitude is about 5 to 8 hertz and uh, mostly head is not involved and they are involuntary and when they try to do something the tremor stops. That is the specific nature of these tremors. And rigidity they have cogwheel type of rigidity in the upper limbs like uh, 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 cogwheel rigidity uh, you know the cycle cogwheel when you cycle when you are cycling it it goes uh, forward with a rigid pattern likewise the upper limbs are rigid in that pattern and we call it cogwheel rigidity the lower limb rigidity is mostly like a lead pipe you can bend a lead pipe uh, in your own direction as you please like likewise the uh, rigidity in the lower limbs are mostly like lead pipe rigidity and bradykinesia their main problem is they can't initiate movements for an example when they sit on a chair it is very difficult for them to stand up from the sitting position and uh, when they want to start their walk it's very difficult for them to start the walk and once they start the walk it's very difficult for them to stop the walk and postural instability they are walking like uh, uh, in a very particular posture which is uh, bent forward and very little arm sink so uh, when they initiate the walk it is very fast and they can't stop it very easily and if somebody pushes them back, they fall like a uh, log backward because they can't resist the uh, push. So uh, their postural instability is uh, very important. And they get some uh, something called mask face because of this muscular uh, rigidity. Their face is ex expressless mask face and their gait is called shuffling gait and uh, 
later stages they tend to fall because their main main problem is they can't turn when they try to turn they fall down so these motor symptoms affect the uh, mobility in this way we are going to discuss about the non motor symptoms of parkinsonism now before that i have to tell you these parkinsonism idiopathic parkinsonism patients they have uh, dimin they have diminished uh, blinking of their eye movements and uh, hence they get some sort of a serpentile uh, look they staring they stare at people and their mask face i mentioned previously and also they have a special pattern of their handwriting which is called micrographia and their handwriting becomes smaller and uh, uh, when they write a sentence when it goes forward the letters become more smaller and smaller so that is a typical pattern of the parkinsonism uh, patient's handwriting non motor symptoms of parkinsonism could be categorized as cognitive symptoms autonomic symptoms and sensory symptoms among the cognitive symptoms we can see they are very anxious and they can become easily depressed and uh, they later on become dementic due to this levy body deposition and uh, they can present as fatigue and psychosis especially they they do get hallucinations of the creatures they think they see things which are not available in the environment especially creatures like animals small muffets and small people and uh, uh, many of these things are uh, in their room and in their environment and it's very difficult for them to uh, bear up with these hallucinations and psychosis sleep disturbances sleep disturbances are very very early signs uh, uh, early symptoms of parkinsonism as i mentioned before autonomic symptoms they get drenching of sweat dyspnea and orthostatic hypotension that means when they change the position their blood pressure uh, cannot be maintained and it drops as a result they may tend to get falls and uh, sexual dysfun dysfunction and urinary problems due to autonomic nerve system problems and they can get even constipation and constipation as i mentioned is also a very early feature of uh, parkinsonism sensory symptoms tingling sensation all over the body olfactory difficulties i told you that they lose the sense of smell and that is also early feature of parkinsonism diffuse pain all over the body and also akathisia what is akathisia they can't stay at a po at a place and they have a urgency to move even though they can't initiate the movements and once they initiate the movement they can't stop the movement they can't stay at one place so that is called akathisia so these are the non motor symptoms of parkinsonism so the parkinsonism patients they get deteriorated with the progression of age and uh, mostly they die of uh, aspiration pneumonia and uh, uh, due to falls and uh, uh, due to general deterioration in their condition in our next lecture we are going to discuss about the diagnosis and treatment of idiopathic parkinsonism in our third lecture we are going to discuss about atypical parkinsonism hope you enjoyed the coffee break today and let's meet with the second lecture about parkinsonism soon and until then i wish you happy new year and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe and put a thumb to encourage me uh, to continue this program thank you so much <laughs>